Let's talk about Zeno's paradoxes. Zeno's paradoxes, stemming from ancient Greece, are some of the earliest philosophical arguments that we know, and they're some of the earliest examples of an infinite regress argument. I'm going to talk about several of Zeno's paradoxes today and illustrate that they do have the classic form of an infinite regress argument. I think as we examine them, we'll see where they go wrong. Now, it took until the 19th century and the development of formal theories of limits, essentially the foundations of the calculus, before people really understood exactly what was going on with Zeno's arguments. But still, we can see there's a kind of problem. He assumes that certain kinds of chains, certain kinds of sequences, can't go on to infinity. And in fact, they can. That's the point of modern mathematics, to understand what it is when a sequence goes to infinity. And so, let's take a look at some of these. First of all, I think it's useful to understand where Zeno is coming from. Zeno was a student of Parmenides. And so, Parmenides had a view that was rather counterintuitive, and Zeno is trying to support that Parmenidean view by undermining our ordinary intuitions, our ordinary sense of reality. So he's giving us skeptical arguments to try to make us doubt the evidence of our senses, to try to make us doubt our understanding of the most basic features of the world. Parmenides thought that everything was a unity, and that all divisions in the world, all change in the world, all motion in the world was an illusion. Zeno is trying to support that conclusion, so let's see how he goes about it. The most famous of Zeno's paradoxes addresses the possibility of motion. Here's how Aristotle describes it. The first asserts the non-existence of motion on the ground that that which is in locomotion must arrive at the halfway stage before it arrives at the goal. Now that's all Aristotle says about it in the physics, but I think we can understand the general idea. The arrow can never get to the target. It can never reach its goal. Why? Well, first it has to go halfway there. And now we can go two ways with this. We can say, but in order to get halfway there, it first has to go halfway toward that. But then, to go what would be even a quarter of the way, it has to go halfway toward that, and so on. But that seems to take an infinite amount of motion, an infinite number of steps even to get off the starting point. The other way to do it is to imagine that the arrow has gone halfway, and say before it can reach the target, it has to go halfway toward the target again. But then having reached there, it has to go halfway again, and so on and so forth. And it will never get to the target. It looks like it requires an infinite number of these steps in order to get there. But that means, hey look, life is finite. It's never going to get there in any finite time. That's the idea of Zeno's basic paradox of motion. Well, we can put that in the classic form of an infinite regress argument. And here's how that would go. Basically, those arguments have a threefold structure. There's a non-emptiness premise that says a certain class of things is not empty. Then there's a premise based on what I call backward extendability or backward seriality. The idea is there's got to be some preceding step, something else that follows from anything. And so you have some non-empty set, something's inside it, but then it requires another one. That one requires yet another one, and so on and so forth. And you get led to an infinite regress. The third premise is a finitude premise. It says you can't have an infinite regress of this kind. There are no infinite descending chains of whatever relation is involved in that backward extendability idea. And so here we could put it in the form in the following way. We could say, first of all, non-emptiness. Suppose that some things move, in other words. And what is it to move? To move is to go from one place to another. But now we can adopt this principle of backward seriality or extendability. Anything that moves to another place must first move halfway there. And then the finitude or finiteness claim, the chain of places that lie halfway between the place from which a thing moves and the place to which it moves can't go back to infinity. Well, from the point of view of modern physics, that's the problem. Yes, it can go back to infinity. You can divide time and space infinitely far. But if you couldn't, if there really was no possibility of an infinite chain, then Zeno would be right. It would turn out that there's no way to accomplish this.
And indeed, we can see an example of that if we consider some people standing in line waiting to go see a movie. Let's say the Barbie movie. Well, are they ever going to get there? Zeno might argue no, because you're pretty far back in the line. Before you get into the theater, you have to go halfway toward it, but then halfway again, halfway again, and so on. You never actually reach the doors of the theater. Well, in this case, it seems as if it's obvious something has gone wrong. Why? Well, if we think in terms of space, the problem is what I just mentioned. There can be an infinite regress. You can traverse an infinite number of steps in space in a finite time. But, on the other hand, if you think about this in terms of places in line, there are presumably only finitely many people ahead of you. And it's true that before you actually get up to the doors of the theater, you have to get through, well, half of the line that's there, and then half of that again, and so on. But given that there's a finite number, eventually you become the next person in line, and you can get into the theater. So, in the case where it's not infinitely divisible, like people standing in a line to get to see the Barbie movie, it's pretty clear that, okay, yes, uh, it is possible to actually become the next person in line, and then to get into the theater. It happens one by one. And so there's no sense when you're the next person to say, ah, but now half a person has to go through, and then the next half of a person of that, and so on. No, I mean, it's just you're the next person to go.